That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Those words transmitted in 1969 through a Plantronics headset. Plantronics still makes headsets, a lot of them, all sorts of them. And our next guest runs the 50-year-old company, Ken, Ken Upon, here at here Bloomberg West. Ken, thanks for joining us. Um, obviously, you guys have a rich history. But the reason we wanted to talk to you is you know what orders are coming in, companies for all sorts of products. We're worrying about the global economy right now. What kind of feedback can you give us on what's going on right now? Sure. Well, first, thanks for having me, John. Uh, you know, we had been seeing, uh, as we indicated in our earnings announcement just a couple of weeks back, actually pretty good business around the world. Um, you know, there's certainly been concerns about governments, but in general, businesses have got their expense structures in place. They're prepared to invest for productivity improvement. And so the vast bulk of our business was in very good shape. But, you know, one story that we heard from Cisco and now we've heard from others is that governments aren't spending a lot and all of a sudden that business is gone. Is that something that you think could get worse? In other words, government spending even less and then fewer product orders? Well, I think that's certainly the case. But, you know, bear in mind we already saw that for state and local governments really for much of the last couple of years. We've seen that in southern Europe uh, over the last period of time. There are certainly some additional shoes that can drop, so to speak. But at the same time, there are other parts of the economy that are still looking pretty healthy, uh, where people are really determined to get more productivity out of their existing labor forces. One of our big stories this week is Hewlett Packard deciding that they don't want to make computers anymore, that it's such a low margin, low profit business that they're saying, okay, time to move on. Now you guys design your products, but you make them too. Um, what kind of profit margins do you have in your business? I, I think it's a good point. You know, when you're in technology, it's not just survival of the fittest, right? You have to move on and constantly adapt to where the opportunities are because it's so dynamic. In our case, we're pretty dynamic and we've changed our business quite a bit. We're changing it again. Our actual operating margin is over 20 points. It was about 23% last quarter. And with your products, you've done some cool stuff. Uh, cool stuff with sound technology too. Absolutely. I mean, some of the, you know, the new products, for example, they have sensors in them. So they know whether or not you're wearing the product. So we don't put the sound there if you're not wearing it. You got a cell phone, you pick it up, the sound is there. You put on your headset, it'll answer the call for you, it'll automatically call in conference calls for you, it'll allow you to conference between different systems. The capabilities we can put in newer products are absolutely remarkable. Ken, you're a former investment banker uh, before <laughs> you were running this company, and we've spoken so much about the deals this week, two really um, uh, impressive deals, Google and Motorola, and then, of course, HP doing a huge software deal. Uh, does it surprise you that we are seeing big deals happen? Well, you know, sometimes the deals are a surprise because, you know, they're, they're not asking for our particular counsel on them. Having said that, I think some of the warning signs were out there. I mean, if you, if you look at, let's take uh, in the case of Google uh, and Motorola, you know, there was a great deal of discussion about the desire to improve their patent portfolio. There was a great deal of discussion about the desire to improve, you know, the end-to-end the -end experience. You know, in our sector, slightly closer to it, Microsoft buying Skype, you know, there, there was a great deal of interest in the part of people putting in link to allow people to broadly, you know, have uh, communications across both consumer and business applications. So I think some of the rationales, you know, for some of these transactions have been pretty well known. Take us inside your business for a second. When you're trying to gauge what orders are going to be like or how the economy is going to affect your business, what's one interesting thing that you know, um, okay, orders are going to take a hit or actually things are pretty good? What's a little tidbit you can share with us? Well, I'll tell you first how we try to run our business. We try to run our business knowing that it is, you know, if you read Black Swan or something like that, I mean, it's very, very hard to predict sudden changes in the future. And so what we try to do more than anything else is run our business so be as flexible and as adaptable as we can when something does hit on the theory that we can't always pr project that. So we run almost no lead time so that we get good information. There are certain things that we do look at in our business that we think are slightly more leading indicators in terms of, of business demand and then we ratchet that into our forecasts. All necessary to run a business in this kind of economy. Ken, thanks for sharing your perspectives with us. Ken Conapon of Plantronics.